Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow region. Now we're not quite in Moscow today, we're actually just a few kilometers outside of the Makad which makes us that we're in Moscow region. So I'm actually at my local shopping center and we're here to see Zara. Or is it Zara? Let's go and have a look, shall we? So right in front of me is MAG, M-A-A-G. Now what does MAG mean? Now magazine in Russian essentially is a shop or some kind of a store. So I wonder if that's a reference or not. Now we're not gonna walk in right away. We're gonna actually have a little walk around of the shopping center and have a look at some of the other changes here because there's some other interesting name changes that you might be interested in. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before, you know I do walk arounds of supermarkets, of shopping centers. And this video is gonna primarily focus on MAG or Zara or some of the stores from the same brand that was Zara. But I just thought I'd show you here, this was La Ossetan. Now it really is still kind of La Ossetan. Everything inside is exactly the same store and location. The only difference you've got is now the spelling of the word has to be in Cyrillic. So it's still really the same thing, except just a few different Russian spellings of the name, but everything else inside, even you can see the posters on the back wall there, La Ossetan kind of clear as day. Now, if you're not sure about which shopping center I'm at, this is Salarevo Metro Station, or, and this is Solaris Shopping Center. Now, this is basically the closest place to where I live. I would come here about every second day. Just thought this was kind of interesting right in the front here. There's one of the Chinese brands here, Chenggang Auto. Now, there's nobody here showing the car today, so it's just parked up here. But obviously in normal times, I guess, when Chinese cars weren't a thing, they would have had, you know, maybe kind of a Nissan or Toyota or Ford or whatever brand would be here. But now the Chinese cars are slowly coming into the Russian market. So the main original company that Zara was made up of was called Inditech. Now Inditech was a Spanish company, or still is, and they had 514 stores here in Russia. And Dub, well oh, Dub is a bit of a strange name, isn't it? But this was Pull and Bear. Now there is actually a few people in here, which is kind of nice. Now I was planning to go to another shopping center to check these stores out, but if my local shopping has got the store, why not come here? One of the interesting things about this shopping center uh, that I find very fascinating is the square meterage of this shopping center is technically larger than any shopping center in all of Australia. And this is kind of considered maybe the 20 or 30th largest in Russia by maybe even 40th. And yet this is bigger than any shopping center in Australia. So Inditech was made up of primarily of six different companies. And here we have another one right here. Now, again, if the store doesn't look familiar on the sign, Villet. This was Stradivarius, which always had that kind of musical note and Stradivarius, you know, the, the music. And this is now Villet. And then the fourth one that's gonna open in this shopping center and it hasn't opened yet is ECRU. Now, you can actually see the signage through the window there and this frosted glass. And this was originally Bushka. And for now, looks like they're just basically still preparing. You can actually see through the glass just all the shelves and all the stock and everything's there. And then rounding out this very sunny uh, uh, atrium area here with this very popular uh, bright glass domed roof, which they seem to love in all the shopping centers in Russia, uh, especially the larger ones. This was where it was the uh, Uniglo store here. Now it's going to be Lime. Now it's not the same brand whatsoever as Zara and Inditech, but there was a store open here uh, through winter, but I'm pretty sure it was just a pop-up store. They actually had a kind of a jacket store and kind of winter store. And then now it looks like Lime is coming here. So coming soon is Lime and Uniglo as Unigon. Now I promise you I'm going to get into Zara and we're going to get a bit of a walk around. Oh, well, sorry, Mag. Can I even say Zara anymore? But I just found this little alley of uh, shops here on my right hand side. Quite interesting because of all the changes. So I just want to point out a few more to you. So right next door to uh, Villet, 
it's very hard to sort of say this name, mean it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Uh, it's very hard to get a grasp of that word is Stars Coffee. Now, depending on uh, which sort of rock you might have been hiding under, or if you live in a cave, or maybe you're just not a coffee drinker, this was Starbucks, and it became Stars Coffee. And very, very little has changed. The menu has been tweaked slightly, but it really still is Starbucks for me. But just slightly different branding and coloring and themes, but they're still here. And finally, my bank manager called me and said, Russell, I've got good news. The Swarovski shop in Russia is not open any longer. This was where Swarovski was. You can probably see from the kind of metal surroundings here, this was the branding of the store. And there is a store coming soon, I imagine, but this for now is just a shopping center branding on here. So I wonder what's gonna happen. But for now, my pocket is that bit heavier from my wife not coming here. Now, I know lots of you are gonna say to me, Russell, the shopping center's empty. There's no people. Must be eight o'clock in the morning. Now, it's actually 2.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday. So I've come here kind of midweek in the afternoon. I just dropped my wife off who went to the a doctor's appointment and I've got a couple of hours here at the local shopping center now Bootwood might look familiar now if I just walk not even a few steps closer here and I'm pretty sure this gives away what the branding of Bootwood is Timberland and again everything at the store here is still Timberland and now Bootwood Actually, it's slowly becoming a multi-brand shoe store as well. So you'll see here, uh, Camper, which is another branded uh, clothing store in Russia. But pretty much Timberland is still in the store. And it seems like it took such a long time for New Balance to lose its balance. And now it's become Trend Zone. It's kind of an interesting name for a store, Trend Zone. But the first sweater we see right at the entrance is definitely New Balance. Is that as for tea? <laughs> the staff are super nice in here. They're waving and saying hello. But New Balance is still, it's, it doesn't, has it lost its balance? I don't know, but I think everything inside, from what I can see, looks all the same. And over here is Mango. Now, Mango is actually a uh, existing brand here in Russia that had shops in pretty much every shopping center in Russia. But this was actually the Mark and Spencer store, or Marks and Spencers, if I'm going to say it wrong. And obviously they left, and Mango pretty much took over the exact location. So everything, the same shelving, the same stands, the same hooks and hangers, uh, except now it's a Mango store. So are you feeling confused yet? I've got another one for you right here. Now this is literally across from the Marks and Spencer. Well, what was the Marks and Spencer? This is Mustang. Now, depending on the store that you go to in the different shopping centers, this is, or was, the Levi's store. And you can see that kind of wood finish on the entrance. You can see all the jeans hanging up in the back here. Uh, so in some stores, well, some shopping centers, it's Mustang. And in some places it's J&S, or jeans. I kind of like the Mustang name. I guess they're going for that kind of Russian country vibe, but it really still is a Levi's store. All right, probably on this level, this might be the last one I think. I walked in this way and these are all the stores that I passed on the way through at the beginning. So now, AR Fashion. Feels like it's just people just making up names and scribbling on a bit of paper and coming up with them. But if you have a look right here, let's see if we got the, uh, 2023 logo, US Polo Association, which is what this store basically is. And this is exactly everything that's renamed, uh, remained unchanged. I was gonna say renamed, it is renamed. AR Fashion. I just feel like that, that's just some made up letters by somebody that's just scribbled it down. Now I thought I'd just head on upstairs uh, and show you two more stores, I promise. We're gonna get to Zara slash Mag slash Zara in a second. And I thought on this second level, I'd show you a couple more stores. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are very curious about these changes and especially maybe how they're reported 
in media outside of Russia versus how I'm showing it here at my local shopping center here in Moscow region. Now from this angle right here, I can get both stores in the same frame. So here on the left is Mia Kubikov or World of Cubes or World of Bricks. And this was and still is the Lego store. Uh, absolutely, Lego is on every shelf. There is definitely Lego in the window. There's the Lego Porsche right there. Porsche 911, it's a pretty cool model too. And these will be all different seasonal new releases that get kind of put on the stands from time to time. But that's it for the changes. Just that sign right there, Mir Kubikov. And then across the, uh, I guess this upper level, we can see downstairs where we had Trend Zone just before, is Mother Bear. Now, depending on where you live in the world, maybe you're from Russia, maybe you're from Europe, maybe Australia, this was Mother Care. This is actually a very big store too. It's essentially got two entrances, one over here and one over here. And Mother Care, if you don't know the brand is, well, was very famous in the UK and different parts of Europe as a children's clothing store, accessories, prams, and it was kind of a go-to for mothers, uh, particularly in England that I know very well. Mother Care was such a huge brand and still is. And here in Russia, it's now Mother Bear. Now, it's probably not the most exciting view uh, out the window here from the shopping center. This is actually the highway that I take coming into the shopping center here. It's always a good judge of how busy this place is, if this outdoor car park is full or not, because especially when it's warm weather and blue skies today, everyone parks outdoors. And I just noticed they're setting up an outdoor go-kart track over there. That's gonna be interesting once it opens, but here we are in what used to be McDonald's, and it really still, everything about it is McDonald's. Look, the ladies are in the shirts and ties, and Right there is the big hit on the board there, the ice cream sundaes and the meals right there. But of course this is Kuzne i Tochka, which is tasty and that is all, or tasty and dot. And have a look now, they've got the kids, uh, I don't know what they're gonna call them now, the kids menu, uh, meals right here. And I think you got trading cards there's no plastic toy anymore. You get these trading cards where you can learn the different animals. So that's the toy at the moment. I really never get tired of coming to this shopping center because it's so spacious and there's so much room to walk around. If you came here on a Saturday or Sunday, completely different story. I mean, it's wall to wall with people. You can barely get a spot in the car park. You're almost queuing up to come into the, under the barriers to come in the car park. And if you come midweek, such a different story. Now I'm just heading on downstairs and I just got a bit distracted by one of the mannequins in this shop window here. And if anyone can tell me where in the world you're wearing these, uh, I don't know what you call these, like shoe covers or denim, are they leggings? Or what are they calling these things? Someone tell me in the comments that these are popular and I just didn't know about them. Now, if you're wondering who took over these stores, it's a company uh, that's based in United Arab Emirates called Dahia Group. Dahia Group, D-M-C-C -C is the company. Now, the Dahia Group in UAE or in Dubai basically also uh, look after and deal with Zara in the Middle East. So it's just interesting that there is such a kind of crossover from the brand that was here to the brand that's here now. And now I have never been into this Zara store before, so I can't make that comparison of store for store. If I went to the Lego store, if I went to the shoe store, I would be good. But quite clearly everything in the shop here has the MAG logo on it. It has the MAG branding. Uh, it's got the mag signage right here. You can see on the jeans and the tags. So, yeah, it's a very spacious store. It's like, it's as though there's kind of, I don't know, a lot of stuff missing from the shop floor. I mean, 
Are they going for this kind of Gucci look? I always call it the Gucci look, where they've just got like one pair of shoes on display um, or not. But it definitely feels like a Zara store. I mean, uh, from you know how the previous store looked, the signage, the ticketing, it looks, it looks like it did. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not very fashionable as a person. I, I primarily go to supermarkets. I go to you know, other stores, but it's nice to walk around. It's incredibly spacious, the shop. I mean, this is not a small store to walk around in. Go back here to the kids section. And obviously being midweek, it isn't expected to be as busy as it would be on Saturdays and Sundays. People come shopping in Russia on the weekends. Obviously working days and non-working days are a big difference. So, yeah, everything Looks very Zara-esque. It's the kind of the words I'm going to use. But of course, everything is got this uh, uh, mag. I keep wanting to say zag, mag branding. So yeah, this is all the kids stuff back here. It does kind of go on and on a little bit. And there's plenty of stock and sizes and staff putting stuff out on the shelves everywhere. Now I'm probably the least uh, fashionable person to be making a review of Zara or Mag, which is called now. I'm a Target shopper, I'm a Kmart shopper. I like in Australia, Big W. My mum will attest to the stops that I go to and to come to these kind of trendy shops, it's definitely very unrussell like So you have the privilege of getting me to come in here, especially for you guys. You've asked me for this video for probably a good couple of weeks now, so I finally made it here. They've got this huge, incredible wall here, and the most tiniest men's section, or man's section. Is it men or is it man? Let me know, but everything just seems so spacious and, and spread out everywhere, but I mean, it's a nice store. They've got some music playing. They wouldn't have had to do literally anything to reopen the store, barring changing over the stock. Now, one of the efforts, I mean, if they did use Zara product here, uh, I mean, one of the harder efforts would have been having to change all the tags and labeling and, and branding here. You can see the mag branding on everything. I mean, it's quite noticeable on all the products. I mean, is it still Zara? That's the question, right? I mean, I think it's a certain shopper that likes these kind of stores. You can see here the men's uh, jackets right here. 6,999 rubles, so at $100. Now, even my wife wasn't shopping at Zara before. She liked Uniqlo, she liked H&M. So to come to this store now, it's uh, not somewhere that she personally shops either, so. And uh, it's not probably the trend for me personally, but as a person that works in retail, there's just such huge gaps. I feel like there's a lot of things missing and there should be more stuff. Maybe they just don't have all the merchandise and they've just left big spaces everywhere. So what do you think? Is it Zara? Is it Mag? Is Mag Zara? It's kind of interesting just looking at the ownership and the company that's essentially uh, took over the ownership of all of these locations, I mean, 500 shops. It's not something that you can just easily just put your hand up and buy, right? Especially the leases and the agreements in every shopping center throughout Russia where these stores are. So the company from the Middle East, they had obviously a connection already with Zara in the Middle East and that's pretty much how they're sort of opening the stores over there. So just an interesting situation. So what do you think everybody? Let me know in the comments. Have you shopped at Zara before? Just walking around and watching this, does it feel still very Zara-like? Now, I know for sure for me, most of the clothing doesn't fit me. And that's essentially why I didn't really shop here before. Uh, a lot of the stuff is this skinny fit and slim fit. 
And if you all know me, I'm definitely not that person to wear that kind of clothes. But uh, classic t-shirts here for 790, oh, static, 799 rubles. That <laughs> gave me a zap. <laughs> and then in the back here, some plenty of different colors and definitely, uh, you know, I guess we're in springtime coming into summer, so more than likely a lot of this is seasonal as well. So they'll change things coming out of spring into summer, then winter. And the registers back here. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I just find it just overly, overly spacious, but maybe that's a thing, right? That Gucci look where there's just less things on display. It makes you want it more because maybe your size isn't here when you come back. I've got to say from walking around for, you know, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes in here, plenty of stuff. There is lots of stuff. They're in very nice kind of uh, business attire, kind of looking uh, like uh, fitted suits. It's not kind of that young trendy kind of look that they're wearing, you know, but there is a lot of stuff. They're pretty much fixing everything as soon as someone touches it. I'm pretty sure the fact that this store has been closed for probably more than a year, a year and a half now. They were pretty excited to get back to work here and uh, at the point that this store was closed, they were still getting paid as employees to stay home basically. But, you know, anybody that works in retail knows, <laughs> you know, you don't want to sit at home. You want to be here selling. Okay, everybody, so as I walk out of Mag, I mean, are you gonna tell your friends, let's go shopping at Mag today? I mean, I think it was just cooler to say, let's go shopping at Zara, you know? It's just interesting, all of the stores that you've seen in this video that have changed names uh, and have they really changed, you know? You know, it's just some of the names they've come up with, like I'm just looking across now at Dub again and over there, Villet. It's just, they're not even comprehensible names. Let's go shopping at Dub, shall we? You know, not Pull and Bear, not Stradivarius, not Zara. Uh, <laughs> I'm just curious of everybody's thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments what you think. Does it matter? Does it really matter that they've changed names? Or, you know, is the, the brand still there and it doesn't bother you too much? Now, I thought I'd have a quick walk around Dub. Now, my sister's son, who is my nephew, He's into dubstep, which is a kind of type of music that I just still can't get into either, but he tries to tell me about it all the time and how it's a big trend. So I wonder where dub, the word has come from. Right here and then on the tags as well. Dub is right there. So now while we were in Bali, so if anyone knows we were in Bali going back three weeks ago, we traveled to Australia for nine days as well. We went to Pull&Bear in Bali. They've got them in the shopping centers there. And my wife struggled. She walked around and around and still didn't find something she liked. And there is literally one or two people in here. And otherwise everybody else is just the staff. So I wonder if Pull&Bear has pulled all the shoppers away. <laughs> I'm using a few many too many puns today. But you can see here on the tags, Euro size small, made in Bangladesh. I think that's pretty much a thing, right? With a lot of clothing, comes from a lot of these far off countries. I mean, very nice store, I mean, very nice layout, but this was what Pull and Bear was <laughs> before it closed. I've definitely been in this store before. My wife likes some of the clothing in here, not everything, but that's, that's a thing, right? I mean, they're trying to create a different fashion trend from each brand but there's not even a staff member at the counter there i'm imagining they kind of jump in when someone wants to pay for something but obviously being midweek uh, there's not as many people around at the shopping center you can see that from the video i did intentionally come here today to come uh, to either this shopping center or another one with these stores open so i imagine if i go to one a little bit closer to moscow they may be a bit busier but my regional shopping center here is kind of quiet because of the, just the, the time of day. Apparels.com, I just noticed there's a website there. I wonder if that's just a, 
a sign that has nothing to do with the brand. Um, typically all the websites in Russia are .ru or .ru. There's more Bangladesh logos there, Euro size medium. So let me know in the comments, everyone. Do you know uh, Pull and Bear where you live in the world? Is it a brand that you may shop at? I mean, again, we were at the one in Bali not even three weeks ago. So um, that one in Bali, I guess the big difference too, it was uh, when we went to that shopping center, it was late in the evening. You know, a lot of people go shopping in the evenings and afternoons there because of how hot it gets in the daytime. But this is nice and air conditioned in here today. Check that out. In case you want to know how car it is to the cash desk, it's a whole 13 meters or nine meters to the accessory section. That's a kind of cool little uh, thing that they put up on the roof there, but tracky dacks. These are what we call tracky dacks. Do you call them track pants? What do you call them where you live? In Australia, they're called tracky dacks. I've even got my wife saying that now, so. So as we walk out of Dub, or what was Pull and Bear, um, <laughs> I just find it interesting, these names. Uh, I'm a happy person always and you know it's just fascinating this change or is it a change you know the uh, the sign's gone the shop's still there the tags are changed is it the same thing I, I think it looks like that to me with Pull and Bear maybe Mag uh, the fact that I'm not really a Zara shopper I can't notice it but I'm sure from you watching the video you can tell you know that sort of difference in the store I remember very well when I did my first few shopping center walk arounds back at the beginning of last year, people said, oh, give it six months, give it 12 months and come back and check it out. And as I kind of uh, slowly end the video here, I'm just going past the ReStore, which is the uh, Apple reseller. These are pretty much the primary stores that sell the Apple products. Literally, when you walk in the door here, iPhone 14 Pro is right here right on display so yeah they're definitely available come back in a year and tell me can i get them and yes i can okay everybody i want to thank you for watching the video today and get to go and see the zara store mag store uh, obviously we did a bit of a walk around we went also into dub what do you think of both of the stores zara and dub uh, please uh i'd love people to comment away and let me know what you think Maybe you were never a shopper in either of these stores, so it has no bother to you. You know, you come to the shopping center, you've still got your favorite store. I know my favorite supermarket's right here. Globus is still right here. I know you're waiting for a supermarket video. One of those is coming very soon. Uh, if you like the video, everyone, give it a thumbs up. How's it going? The that for tea? <laughs> yeah, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. If you didn't, I guess a thumbs down. I can see how many thumbs down I get. I know it happens on all the videos. So yeah, post a comment. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for watching to the very end. If you're not and you really like these kind of videos, click subscribe. More videos from here in Russia, here in Moscow region where I am. This is my local shopping center. I mean, how big it is as well is kind of crazy. So yeah, I've left another video for you to watch right after this one, right on the side over here. As the trolley guy scares me right in front of me. You can watch that right after this on another video on the channel. Uh, click that if you like. If not, check out the playlist. Find something new to watch. Bye, everybody.